The battle over what children should be taught in school has been raging for nearly a century now. The question is, is there room for compromise? Joining us to talk about it is Robert Boston of the Americans United for Separation of Church and State and Charmaine Yost of the Family Research Council. Appreciate both of you being with us. Robert, let me start with you. Polls show that nearly half the American public believes that people didn't evolve from lower life forms but were created in our present form by God. If so many people think that, shouldn't we at least be discussing it in a science class? Well, I think we need to look really not at what polls show, but what scientific evidence shows. We, we wouldn't want to teach something in the public schools that was factually incorrect simply because some people believed it was so. So we really have to look at the science. If you look at the scientific community, you don't see this great disparity in polls. You see most of the scientists backing the theory of evolution. Well, Charmaine, what about that? Why should a science class be forced to, to teach something which mainstream science says is simply not true? Well, you know, mainstream science throughout history has been challenged by questions. And that's how we make advances in science, is being open to all different perspectives. And that's all that we're calling for, is saying that, you know, have we gotten to a place in our culture where science has such an orthodoxy around Darwinian theory that we can't even question it, that we can't even look at some of the gaps in the theory and ask how can we do better and how can we answer some of these questions? That's all we're asking for is an openness of dialogue and looking at all of the research. Robert, President Bush has, has suggested that this theory of intelligent design should be taught in public school classrooms. The idea is that kids should be able to make up their own minds. They should get mm -hmm. different uh, points of view. Robert, w w what's wrong with that? I disagree. I, I think that there is a mechanism in science that allows for these views to be aired through peer-reviewed journals and the intelligent design advocates well, sure. have not been able to publish any research that That's indicates their point of view. Let me finish, Charmaine. Uh, and one of the important things we need to remember, too, is that some of the ideas that groups would like to bring into our schools have been completely discredited. For example, the idea that the Earth is 10,000 years old and that dinosaurs and humans lived at the same time. Scientifically, that's untenable, yet that is what the creationists believe, and that is what, ultimately, I think, they'd like to bring into our classroom. Charmaine, right. I mean, do you, do you believe that dinosaurs walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? And, and if so, is that... The, the basis of, of w your argument. What we're looking at here is saying there are legitimate scientific questions on the table and it is not true that um, that there is a complete cohesiveness among scientists. So we're really, really seeing an amazing censorship of anything that questions Darwinianism and you see this kind of thing where immediately the minute you question Darwinianism um, people like Rob come up and say, oh no, you're going to talk about God. Well, you know, I think our children um, have more robust intelligence in, in questioning um, to be able to cope with looking at all the different theories that are out there. I think it's, it, it's uh, I just have but, to ask, what is he so scared of? Robert, do you believe this is really about a debate about science or is it about a debate about religion? Of course it's about religion. And notice how she did not answer your question about the age of the earth and dinosaurs and humans coexisting. I would guess that if you took a survey of the members of the Family Research Council, you would find overwhelmingly they believe that the earth is six to 10,000 years old, that dinosaurs died because they were too big to fit on Noah's Ark or that they existed alongside human beings, other pseudo-scientific ideas that have been debunked time and time hey, again. Hey, Rob, Why would we want to bring this into the classroom when there's absolutely no are, scientific evidence? Charmaine, answer the question. Yes or no? Trying, Age of the you Earth. Are, you are trying to confuse the issue of conflating. Age of the Earth. Answer me, the question. I am trying How to answer the question. It? I'm trying to answer the question. How old you is it, Charmaine? I can't get a word in. That you're trying to conflate creationism with intelligent design. That's because I'm you want, you that want you creationism in the classroom. I, answer the question. I didn't, 10, I didn't say years that. Six the billion. only thing I have talked about is Why intelligent design. Why are you afraid design. to answer the question? Why are you afraid of the fact that 90% of the American people do believe in God? I know exactly what you want to do. You want to teach your book of Genesis as if it's some kind of literal scientific truth instead of maybe possibly metaphor or uh, uh, lots of other history. You want to bring it in as science. It's not going to fly. Do you want your children, Charmaine, do you want your children children to expose to a, a belief which so the scientific community has disproven. I'm not saying that they've disproven all of this, but uh, in, in certain cases, I mean, some things sure. clearly have been dispro disproven. Things sure. which have been clearly scientifically disproven, do you still want them taught? Well, absolutely. That would that would come in in a history of science and a philosophy of science. That's why I'm saying there's different kinds of classes. So we're talking about kind of a broad array of things. Your kids need to know what opinions are out there, um, and 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 see what the evidence. So is. so for Consider other so for other subjects in a science class that people disagree on, but that have been disproven, the kids should be taught those as well. Sure. Should, 
they should they, they should they should know that there are other people who disagree on Absolutely. on just about every scientific issue. I'm not afraid of my kids knowing about any controversy that's out there as long as you put the evidence on the table and consider what what the debate is. That's what education is all about. It's having a vigorous debate. Charmaine Yost, appreciate it, and uh, and Robert Boston as well. Thank you. Discussion.